Okay, so I just gave the inside of the bell housing a little clean up in there from all the oil from the seal leaking. And I've done the other side output shaft seal, the passenger side, uh, already because the flange is out. I wanted to show you the full process for this one. So this is an, uh, an O2J or 02J transmission. There's also a 02M transmission, which has a different style of uh, clutch release mechanism. So this is an O2J, which has what I consider to be a traditional uh, clutch fork and release bearing. Release bearing there, which I got a new one of because this one is kind of starting to get a little noisy. So, uh, But so for the O2J, I don't know about the O2M because I don't have one of those. The O2J, there is a small diameter bolt in the center of this flange. You can't see it because it's covered in oil right now, but or grease rather from the CV joint. But in the center of this, uh, there is a uh, six millimeter, six millimeter internal hex bolt. Not very big in diameter. Um, but it's pretty long and you'll have to have some kind of a, a pry bar to kind of pry against the back side of the uh, axle mounting threads for the actual CV axle. But yeah. By holding it like that with some kind of a pry bar, you can crack the bolt loose. And then, as you saw there, as it comes out, it kind of popped at the last second. And it's because it's actually um, spring-loaded, the flange is. So there's the bolt, not very big diameter, but it's pretty long. Um, and so the flange has a spring on it. So this part here is kind of a coil spring of sorts. I'm not quite sure what the purpose of that is, but I believe it's just to put uh, tension on the bearing because it just inside there is the bearing for this shaft and uh, the spring will put the sideways tension on it. I'm assuming it's a tapered roller bearing. So this spring will put the tension on the bearing so that it's got the right side to side tension. And so that's why it's important to make sure that uh, when you're releasing it, technically you should try and take some of the spring tension off. I'm not even sure how you would do that, maybe with a clamp. Uh, but I'm waiting to see when I go to put this one back together, whether the bolt will actually start unless you compress the spring a little bit so that it will reach the threads. So that's kind of goopy. I'm not going to touch in here because that's where the CV joint operates and it's okay for it to be greased. But I'm going to try and clean up the outside a bit and the surface that the, the ring that the seal rides on has to be uh, cleaned up obviously so we don't tear out the new seal. So I'm just going to set that aside for the moment. Hopefully without getting grease everywhere. And I'm going to um, gonna do a little bit of a cleanup on this area around the seal before we go to pull the new or the old seal out, just so that no dirt goes inside, because that is open into the open into the transmission more or less, because there is gear oil starting to come out there. So I want to prop this up a little bit if I can find a block here. Okay, so to remove the seal now, there's definitely a better way to do this, but I have limited tools where I am right now. If you have a proper seal puller, that would probably be the most logical 
tool to use. I tried to just pop the other one out how you would conventionally do it, but it did not want to move. So I'm going to try to do this without marking the the outer seal surface. It's not as big of a deal as the, the part that moves, but if you have any kind of a deep gouge in the casting, it won't seal anymore. So I'm going to try and do this without gouging the... Of course, the transmission is moving. What else is new? Basically make the seal shrink enough in diameter that I can pop it out. And then inspect if I damage the outer sealing surface at all. That's garbage. I think I did a pretty decent job of not marking the surface. A couple little nicks there, but nothing that's going to cause a sealing issue. I put the other one in mostly by hand, so we'll see if this one is just as easy. Always pay attention to which way the seal you took out was in there. Usually you can tell by looking at it which way it needs to go, but um, if you're touching, if you're opening something that hasn't been touched before, uh, always put the new seal in the same way the old one was. So in this case, the flat side with the numbers and lettering was out, not the side that has the spring washer and all that. So as the transmission moves some more, of course. dirt everywhere. Again, in an ideal world, you would power wash your transmission before you even start any of this to avoid all this dirt around the place. And then I just used, you can use, uh, you can use a small socket. Ideally, you want a, um, a socket either big enough to, to fit the outside of the seal or some kind of a sleeve, a piece of exhaust pipe maybe. All I did on the other one, since these go in so easily, is I just went around and all you're trying to do is walk it in evenly so that you don't distort it and then it won't seal properly. That's why it's good if you have a, a huge socket to use, or I wish it would stop moving, that would be really good. Um, a big socket to use, or if you have a, a sleeve or a piece of pipe. There are actually kits, bearing, uh, bearing and seal kits that are meant for exactly this. They give you a whole bunch of different sizes of uh, sleeves and tools to install a variety of bearing races and sleeves and seals. And so once it makes the same noise all the way around, you just use your finger as a gauge to see that it's the same all the way around is all that matters. You don't want it to be high in one spot and low in another spot. That's going to mean that the diameter of the seal is not sitting right on the diameter of the shaft. So that feels pretty good to me. So just do a little clean up on the flange here. Mainly again, just focusing on the surface that the seal is going to run on. So you get the surface all cleaned up like that and you can actually see there's a, a wear groove in there already from the old seal. A lot of times what you can do is uh, just install the seal a little bit in further, a little bit further out 
than it was when you pulled it out to get the sealing surface on a new piece of metal. In this case, it's pretty hard to do that. I don't want to have it out any further or it might be hitting here and I don't want to have it in too far or it might be off this surface. So unfortunately, I'm just going to put it in the same place. It wasn't really leaking when I pulled them out, but I didn't want to have to do these later. So it will likely be no issues for sealing in this case. If your sealing surface is a lot worse, it's pitted or it's got a really deep groove in it, then you may have to do, like I mentioned, and position the seal in further or out further. And so what I really need now is a little bit of oil, which I will just steal from in there. Uh, so on these, on normal types of seals, you want to have just a little film of oil on the surface when you put it together. It's only that special rear main seal we did earlier that you're supposed to put it together dry. Most normal uh, neoprene seals, you put them together with a little bit of oil engine oil or differential oil so that uh, it's not going together dry is the only thing to note. So I've already put this one back in. So the uh, inner spline actually moved, which I don't know how that can be possible, but pay attention for that because that wasn't cool. Like that. So now, like I was saying before, we got to figure out if the bolt will pull the flange in or if you have to compress the spring. And I think you have to compress the spring, which is not cool. So, depending on I wish the transmission would stay still, that would be really good. Nope. So, you do in fact have to press that spring before you can put the bolt in, so I have no idea how I'm going to do that with no clamps or anything over here. Um, if, there wasn't, if it wasn't for gear oil coming out the other side, I would just tip it up and, and you know, put a block of wood and lean on it or something, but... So there we go. You just have to hold your mouth the right way. It would be way easier if you had a clamp of some kind or if you had two people, one person to hold it and one person to thread the bolt in, but I'm working by myself, so you do what you gotta do. So I need to look up a torque spec for that now. So it looks like they're calling for 18 foot-pounds on these guys, which Seems like a ridiculous amount for the tiny little bolt that it is, but... Just start at 10. And work my way up. Now the question is, how do you hold going the opposite direction? The manual says to put a couple of the CV joint bolts in and pry against those. But I don't like the idea of that. 
both from a bending them standpoint and also potentially hurting the threads. I'd like to just pry the way I... Actually, maybe I can. I might need a bigger bar, but... Actually, if I let that go against there, that'll work. There's 10. Come on. And then we'll go 15. And 16, 17, 18 foot pounds. Come on. Don't move the transmission. Not be that much more from 15. That's why I don't like this torque wrench. There's no way it should be that hard to make it click at 18. There's 16 already. There's 17 already. So it's probably over 18 based on that. Oh, stop moving, man. Oh, that is so frustrating. Oh my goodness, why will it not click at 18? Get your ass up there. Man. this torque wrench in the garbage but I don't have another one that's a low range so okay so that is how you replace the uh, output shaft seals on the O2J transmission I imagine the O2M is basically the same on this aspect of it um, but you'll have to look that up if that's what yours is so um, I think we're pretty much ready to try and put this sucker back in the car. I was going to try and do some stuff with the uh, shifter linkage. Maybe I will try and quickly just find out. The side to side on the, sh on the gear selector is very stiff. It doesn't spring back to neutral like it should. So I'm going to I guess while I got it out here on the floor, I'll quickly try and pull this one lever out and see if it's what's stiff. This link, this uh, linkage here, I do know I have to replace that white plastic that guy because it should not move like that. But uh, I think the stiffness in the shifter is probably this pivot here. So I'm going to pull that out and see if, or at least try and disconnect it and see if it's what's stiff. So I'll just quickly investigate this a little bit. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because I can do it once it's in the car. I just would prefer to... Um, Try and figure out at least what I need before I try and get into it later. So there's a little one of the fancy spring clips, same as these that are on the shifter cables. There's one of those. Me, out as I stab myself on the end of that pivot. So there's one of those. And then as far as I can tell, it should come out of there. Now, if it is starting to seize up like I'm thinking, then it may not come out of there very easily. Some kind of, oh, that's not cool. Not cool. I don't know what that's doing. 
far as I can tell, that should be what's holding the... But it does not want to move at all. Wow. There it goes finally, but holy is it ever stiff. So if I had to guess, that is where my stiffness is coming from. Although that has nothing to do with this, as I'm seeing now. That pin is just a pin, and the pivot is actually out at the end here. But that is very stiff, way stiffer than it should be. But that I can potentially fix with Move It. This, there's nothing wrong with that at all. It still doesn't. Unless it kind of pops back to where it's supposed to be. But so I think for now, I'm just gonna put it back together as it is. I can still shift it. It just doesn't necessarily always snap back to neutral, so I'm not as concerned about it. Anyway. Doesn't seem too stiff, but it doesn't, it shouldn't stay there, it should pop back to, and it shouldn't stay there either, it should pop back to wherever three and four position is on the shifter. And we'll have to replace that white plastic piece anyway, so if that plastic piece doesn't come off of this arm, then I guess you get a whole new one of those. But for now, we'll leave it, it works. I might have to take apart this pivot center part there if it's, if the white metal has, uh, corroded and, and started to expand so won't worry about that too much for now uh so the only thing we have left to do is where did i lose the fork put the fork on and the new release bearing this is the old one i can't believe that the actual the part that clips the bearing into the fork is actually plastic which i couldn't believe but Really, this is just to hold it in position until you get the transmission into the flywheel because once it's in there, this is held by the springs on the fork. So. So pop this on now. Right. And the fork is in position for the Uh, clutch slave cylinder to push into it when it's time. All right. The only thing I don't have is a little bit of grease for the input shaft, which it's supposed to have a little bit of something on it. Um. Now I better go get some grease and I'll do some cleanup here and then we'll try and put this sucker back in the car. Um, if you like this video, 
please like, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, follow us on Twitter at GB Productions 6 and on Instagram at GB Productions 1 and visit our website, gbproductions.ca. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.